I'm not supposed to have the Mavic 4 Pro. You see, DJI decided not to ship it to America at all, probably because of the tariff confusion. So I just decided to pre-order it from Adorama, and I was like one of the few people to actually be able to buy it. So this is one of the first American reviews you can see where the person paid for it with their own money and thus isn't beholden to DJI at all. So I'm gonna give you a really unbiased review. I'm gonna tell you how it compares to the old Mavic 3 Pro that's been our trusty drone, up until now the best drone in the world. And I'm going to tell you how the 100 megapixel Hasselblad camera compares to this 100 megapixel Hasselblad camera. First, let's talk about how they fly. The battery life on both is really good, but the Mavic 4 Pro has a little bit better battery life. Real world, I found myself only getting a couple more minutes of flight time, but sometimes a couple more is all you need. The Mavic 4 is significantly faster, at least in the specs. Heading downwind on a windy day, I found it was about 12% faster than the Mavic 3 Pro. But both are definitely artificially limited. Like they both hit a hard speed limit, even if there's a really heavy tailwind. Going upwind though, I found the Mavic 4 was only about 3% faster than the Mavic 3 Pro. The specs tell you the artificially limited top speed that you could get in still wind or with a tailwind. But when you're flying a drone, you don't necessarily know if you're going to be flying upwind or downwind when you need to go fast. If you're trailing a moving car or boat, do you get to control the direction of that vehicle or do you just have to follow it regardless of whether you're going upwind or downwind? You really need upwind maximum speed. And that is only 3% better on the Mavic 4 Pro. So if you are going for the top speed, I don't know that that's a reason you should upgrade. Grade. While I was not impressed with the speed, I was really impressed with the stability. I always had this problem with the Mavic 3 Pro where it would kind of wander up and down even when it was supposed to be stationary. And that meant a lot of my orbits and stuff look like garbage. Like look at this sped up footage of it orbiting a lighthouse. Watch the horizon. You'll see the horizon's moving up and down because the whole drone is going up and down like 10, 20 feet. If you look at the screen recording of this, for some reason you see it thinks it's literally underwater. The fact is it's it's using GPS to figure out where in the world it is, and GPS just isn't that accurate with height, but that can mean it doesn't hold a steady altitude, and that was screwing up a lot of my shots. The Mavic 4 Pro has some additional sensors, and I think it's using those additional sensors to keep itself really level. Look at the same orbit side by side with these two drones, and you can see the Mavic 4 Pro's orbit turned out so much better. Now, these are manual orbits that are relying on my own personal skill, but I was the same dude flying both of them, and I got better results out of the Mavic 4 Pro. And for me, that's reason enough to upgrade, <laughs> but we do have some more benefits coming up. Another big advantage this has is the ability to rotate the camera vertically. Unfortunately, it was a big letdown. Powered off, you can see just how much flexibility the camera has for rotating up or down when it's in this horizontal perspective. But once I rotate it vertically, this is how much it can rotate up or down, just a few degrees. And that's not enough. It's just not enough. It's a design limitation. Shooting stills in the vertical format, that's exactly what I'd want to use most of the time, because most of the time I'm producing an image that I'd want to share on social media like Instagram, which is vertical most of the time. But because you're pretty much limited to shooting just a couple of degrees above or below level, that means you're going to be including a whole lot of sky in the frame, which is really boring. Especially for vertical, I would want to rotate down to include more land in the image and better compose my frame with more interesting subjects. And I can't do that. And as a result, if I were to share vertically oriented drone pictures, I'd probably end up shooting a panorama, which I could do with the old one anyway. But still, I would sometimes use vertical mode for stills, and so that's an advantage. But for video, man, I, I, I would never turn it on until we get a firmware update that might improve it. Because for video, I found it to be extremely unreliable, extremely frustrating. I found it, it ruined my shot. It gets jerky because it needs to readjust the motion. And sometimes it was small little jerks that just ruined the entire shot. And other times it was really big jerks that were very visible and even kind of nauseating to me looking at the screen. Here's why this is a problem. When the drone is flying level, it would look like this and the camera would have this limited range of motion that's better than nothing. If it is flying downwind and the wind is coming from behind, well, it would have to offset that by tilting back some. And now while well, the camera is kind of pointed into the sky and I can't get it to go even level. If it's flying upwind, the drone needs to be positioned like this. And now again, you see, I can't get it level. 
So in normal flying, the wind will vary. It will actually be pushing in different directions because of gusts of wind, and that means the range of motion is limited too. And that means that the Mavic 4 Pro cannot hold a decent vertical shot. What's going to happen when you start editing your video and your shot is just ruined? Can you go back and recreate it? As a result, I don't feel like I could use vertical video on this. And if that's why you're buying it, skip it. So let's talk about the video quality of these two cameras. Now you're going to be doing most of the footage with the wide angle lens. And I found the biggest difference wasn't the fact that the Mavic 4 can do 6K while this is limited to 5K. Side by side in good light, I could not see any difference. The difference I did see was because this is a 28 millimeter equivalent lens on the new 4. The older Mavic 3 had a 24 millimeter lens. And in fact, I always wish that were a little bit wider. I like to shoot wide with my drone shots and fly close to things. It increases the feeling of three dimensionality. It increases the speed and interest of the shot. And so they went more telephoto, significantly more telephoto on the four. And also they don't, at least now, offer a wide angle lens accessory for it. So you're stuck being more telephoto than you were with the three. To make this even worse for still photography, the Mavic 4 Pro has a more narrow aspect ratio, meaning to get back to the more square common aspect ratio, you have to crop even deeper than 28 millimeters. I hope they release a wide angle lens for it soon. So real world, I couldn't really see a difference in the video output, but the fact is video, there's, there's constant motion in it, and thus you don't really get a chance to nitpick, but a lot of us are shooting stills with our drones. I've sold fine art photos with my Mavic 3 here for thousands of dollars, huge, 30 inch, 40 inch prints, because it is really the best landscape camera in the world since you can get so many great aerial perspectives with it. This Mavic 4 Pro is gonna be so much better for that type of work. It produces 100 megapixel output files with the main wide camera and I think 48 megapixel files with the other two cameras. And they produced significantly more detail than I could get out of my Mavic 3 Pro. The fact is the images looked better. But that's not to say that I don't have complaints because I, I always have some complaints. When I look at the files, there seems to be some fake upscaling. I mean, it, it's probably a quad bare sensor, which means it doesn't have color information for each of the different pixels. So it does extract some additional information, but it's not really the same as a proper 100 megapixel sensor. And I proved that by taking pictures side by side with my beautiful, real Hasselblad CFE and 100C, which has a medium format 100 megapixel sensor. Now, is this a fair comparison? Well, from a marketing perspective, they're both marketed as 100 megapixel Hasselblad cameras. So yeah, it seems kind of fair, but you can really see how this one doesn't match up to this one. This one has far more detail. It has real color information with no green or red blotches in it. I bring that up just to offset that sort of misleading part of the true marketing which is to say that a 100 megapixel file isn't necessarily created equal to every other 100 megapixel file. Nonetheless, it is better than the Mavic 3 Pro or any other drone I've ever tested, so I will definitely be using it. On to the medium lenses. Again, real world, I really couldn't see a difference in video quality. All the differences I see are things like the additional stability, not really from the camera. When I took a still photo and really pixel peeped it, yeah, I could see a little bit of difference. So you real estate photographers might want to consider upgrading to the four with a telephoto lens. Again, in video, it was kind of tough for me to see any good difference in daylight conditions. But when I did still photo comparisons where I could really pixel peep, the telephoto lens on this is much better. Now in low light conditions, the Mavic 4 greatly outperforms the Mavic 3. If you're shooting at dusk or at night, the Mavic 4 is definitely worth the upgrade. In the comments down below, let me know what you think and let me know what you'd like to see in our more long-term review as I begin to use this in the real world and get that more relevant data. I really wanted to get some of the objective tests out of the way to satisfy my own curiosity since I do use this Mavic 3 constantly for real world work. I wanted to know how this was going to perform differently and I'm, I'm definitely switching. Don't forget to subscribe to see that follow-up review as well as tutorials on using a drone and my updated guide to passing the FCC part 107 exam. Thanks and bye. One minor improvement I really love is I can now access the memory card without taking out the battery.